With modern cameras, you can spend around $1,000 and get 4K at up to 60 frames per second. But here's the thing. While this was shot in 4K, that's not 60 frames a second. That's not even 120 frames per second. That's actually 480 frames per second at 4K shot on a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Recorded at 60 frames a second, then output in camera at 24 frames a second, the original shot would look something like this. So if you take that clip and stretch it out so that it approximates 480 frames a second, you get this. Three frames every second. So to go from this choppy nightmare to smooth 480 frames a second, I used artificial intelligence to look at each frame and make new frames to fit in between. So you may be thinking having the software to do this is gonna be super expensive and that it'll take forever to process. Well, here's the kicker. It takes less than a minute and it's totally free. What's up guys, Nathan here. So we're continuing our slow-mo series in DaVinci Resolve, and if you haven't seen the first video, check it out right up here. So today, I really wanted to push the limits and see just how slow you can go. But before we get into that, be sure to hit that like button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. Anyway, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and everything I showed in the beginning of the video can be done totally in the free version of Resolve. And just to show you that we are in 4K DCI, I'm gonna go into my metadata and you can see 4096 by 2160, which is indeed 4K DCI. So I'm assuming you know the basics of slowing down footage and resolve, but if you don't, there's a quick crash course in my part one video. So what we have here is dead simple. We have our original clip and I'm just gonna check the playback speed. It's at 100%. We're then gonna bring up our retime controls and let's just bring this thing out to about 12.5%, okay? So, Perfect, and we'll just make sure that we have it right. Yeah, so we want 12.5, which is equal to just about three frames per second. So if we play it back without enabling optical flow, like I showed in the beginning, you get a new frame every eight frames or so, and it's not great to look at. So we're just gonna change that on the clip basis, go into optical flow, and just pick the motion estimation that gives you the least amount of artifacting, and boom. You're using AI to generate new frames and it's just that easy. But as you can imagine, there's some limitations and a little bit of setup required to get this level of results. So to show the limitations, I made this elaborate contraption with our motion control camera rig, showing all the different shutter angles that you can use and all the different results that you can get, but it just ended up being super confusing. So I'm gonna break it down with a few key examples. First one, it's the details. So going back to the flower shot at the beginning, you can see that things look great and that's at enhanced better for the motion estimation. Now, if you had the paid version, you could use speed warp to get even less artifacting, but I think at this level, it does look great, but that's for this particular section of the shot. Let's go to some other part, maybe here. Okay, now it's not quite the same story. Let's go to full screen. So you see this shape back here, the way it kind of jumps and skips in behind? It's kind of just an amorphous blob of a shape and you don't have a lot of detail. And because it's so far away, it's actually moving pretty fast in comparison to this flower here. And that's gonna cause you some problems. So you definitely wanna do some tests to see what you can get to work out first. Another problem is since we've slowed everything down, you also notice some weird things going on with the noise. It's moving so incredibly slow Whereas at the 60 frames, you can see the noise moving around a lot more and it is more dynamic, though that's easily fixed by just maybe adding an adjustment clip on top. And then you can add the film grain effect if you have the studio version, or you can download a grain overlay to still give it that film grainy quality so it doesn't seem like it's kind of frozen in time. Now, another thing to consider is speed. So with that original flower shot, you may think speed's no issue, but let me show you an example. Here's the stormtrooper falling at 60 frames a second. It's pretty quick. So we'll go by frame by frame and you can see at 180 shutter angle, this is what we're getting. So it's moving super fast and you have lots of gaps in between. So if we set this to 480 using the nearest retime process, you'll see we have these massive gaps. Now, if we wanna go in and use optical flow, 
it does something like this. <laughs> which doesn't look great at all. He looks like a little stormtrooper poop. So it's looking at the two frames and there's such a gap in distance between where the stormtrooper is in each frame that it doesn't really know what to do. Now the obvious solution to this problem is slow it down, but if that's not an option, you could try decreasing the amount of motion blur in the shot. And you can do this by increasing your shutter speed or decreasing your shutter angle, same thing. So as an example, we have the same stormtrooper falling at a 30 degree shutter angle. And as you can tell from the side by side, it is a lot cleaner at a 30 degree shutter angle. So if we take that and bring it into optical flow, we get this and it doesn't look great. At least you can tell it's a stormtrooper this time, but even if you were to use speed warp, you'd still get weird frames like this. Simply put, it's just too darn fast. So that's definitely a limitation to consider. So one of the trickier situations is with a face because as humans, we're very good at noticing when there's something not quite right with someone's face. And in these situations, I highly recommend shooting at the highest frame rate your camera can if you wanna slow it down to these kind of ludicrous speeds because you're gonna need all the information you can get. And I'll show you what I mean. So we have these shots here and just for fun, I did it at 180 degrees and 30 degrees just to compare. Now that's the original 24 frames a second. Now when we slow that down quite a bit, you can kind of see this weird ghosting going on. We're gonna go into full screen and look at the mouth where it goes fast. You see the teeth, how they kind of double up on each other and jump in there. So check this out. On this frame, you kind of see this weird ghost tooth thing happening. So it really doesn't look natural and it totally throws you off. So if we go into a shutter angle of 30, we still kind of have the same problem. You have this weird ghosting in at the teeth because it's not totally caused by motion blur. It is better, but you still have that weird ghost tooth that kind of pops up. And it's simply because the motion is too fast for us to capture enough adequate frames at 24 frames a second. So if we actually record it at 60, which hopefully you have the capability of doing. And we're slowing it down to that ridiculous 480 frames a second. So it does look a little bizarre to see her move so slow, but you can see we get much better results in the teeth, not quite as much of that ghost tooth thing going on. It's not perfect. And personally, I find it really unnatural to see a face move this slow. It's almost like you're looking at a picture but it does do a pretty good job, even with the little hairs up here bouncing around. If you need to slow down a moment on someone's face, I really think you could get away with it. And just for kicks, so I also shot this at a shutter angle of 30, just to reduce that motion blur. When using optical flow, I do think the less motion blur you can use, the better just to give your AI clean frames to go off of. But again, it's still not perfect, but this is slowed down to a fairly ridiculous speed. Anyway, folks, I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about optical flow and DaVinci Resolve and how it uses artificial intelligence to make things even slower. And hopefully that helps show you just how slow you can go for free using software. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. And as an interesting fact, about 86% of the folks who watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you hit that button, well, you'll just make my day. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.